How you doing guys? I'm the Bitter Devil. Welcome to my very first Flat Earth video. Uh, no, I'm not a Flat Earther. I'm just addressing some of the claims made by Flat Earthers. Uh, in particular, this one, we'll be addressing the channel called The Plain Truth, ran by a, name, by a man named Travis. Travis uh, likes to take photos of the Chesapeake Bay. And uh, during a, an open panel on uh, Jose J.G. Gonzalez's channel, uh, he was on there and I, I noticed that he was providing some photos uh, during uh, some of the exchanges and I took note of that and decided to go on his channel and look at some of the videos. One video in particular, which I will link in the description, I watched it, the whole thing, because it was relatively short. And it was uh, observations take o taken over a two-day period. Uh, one in the morning and uh, of one day, and then one of the evening following the following day. Uh, and he just kind of put, you know, put the, uh, put him in a video. Now, the video is only about seven and a half minutes long, or seven, almost, I think it's almost eight minutes long. Uh, and I watched it. And I notice something that kind of itched the back of my brain. So I watched it again. And by the second time, uh, I figured out what it was. Uh, so I took some, some screenshots uh, of the video in question of particular points. Uh, I have since then taken, for, taken further screenshots and compile and uh, done some comparison. And I took a video of all this uh, in which I overlay some images, and I go through an analysis uh, process and why I end up concluding what I conclude and how I believe it was done. Um, and I had actually commented on this, uh, my observation, it, with Travis in, in the very same video. Uh, he has since banned my original account, not this one, actually, uh, and uh, blocked me from commenting which of course removes my original comment exchange with him uh, I of course have uh, other means of communicating uh, on YouTube and uh, did so with Travis and got more more story uh, to go with what he's saying um, so uh, during this recording I'll go through the process it was just you know, I put it this way it was Kind of easy, so easy to do. I could do. I did it on my phone. I was able to point out a few things and uh, some things that just don't jive well. And I was able to do it on my phone, which tells you just how easy that was. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, without further ado. Uh, here is the uh, my recording on my phone during the process. I apologize if the audio sucks ass, but there's not much I can do about it. And I apologize for the length of time because it's a lot harder. It takes a lot longer to expose something than it is to just put it out there. A lie is easy to tell. And it's much more difficult to uh, prove that there was a deception in the first place. So it took a little bit longer than I expected. Uh, hopefully you stick to the end, because I do challenge, I do uh, challenge Travis to provide a certain amount of evidence to support his claims. Uh, if he doesn't do so, uh, in a video or, or some kind of exchange that manner, then, well, that tells you more than I could ever possibly uh, explain to you. But, oh, like I said, without further ado, here it is! Oh, and uh, just for shits and giggles, in, in Travis's own vernacular, the plane, what? Like I said, I took uh, some screenshots of Travis's videos, uh, the one in the morning and the one in the evening. Uh, and... The reason being, of course, was the fact that I noticed that there were some oddities about between the two. Uh, 
primarily that his camera in the morning was much closer to the water than in the, in the evening of the following day. I questioned Travis about this, uh, and uh, the first interaction that we uh, had in his comment section was he accused me of accusing him of duplicity. His words, not mine. The reality is, all I was saying was, the camera is closer to the water in the morning than it is in the evening of the following day. He accused me of telling him that his location was, that he was in a different location, but unfortunately for him, I was not actually disputing whether or not he was in his lo the location roughly right around the same spot he goes the whole time, uh, over on not far from uh, Concord's Point Lighthouse, a literal stone's throw away. It was uh, fairly easy to kind of find his location using Google Earth and figure out what he was looking at, things like that. But what interested me in this particular video was the buoy number 17, the one you see before you. Uh, in it, in his video, he uh, shoots this particular one uh, a couple times. In this one, in particular, his morning one. And here's the evening one. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice that there's some differences between these two uh, between these two. Primarily, well, one, the height. Uh, how far above in the uh, photo they are. But also, you're going to notice that the tree line in the morning is much lower than in the evening. Now, Travis has gone on to kind of, I'm not going to say backpedal, but he's given some excuses with a little bit of backpedaling. I'll go ahead and say it. He backpedaled a little bit uh, and is now claiming that he was balls deep in the water, all right? Well, if that were true, then my statement doesn't change. The closer to the water. Now, the problem with that particular uh, line of reasoning is I started looking at a few things, primarily the differences in the uh, elevation of the buoy itself. In the morning, now, the problem is also, let me go ahead and show you, uh, one of the issues with Travis is that he cannot, for the absolute life of him, He cannot, for the life of him, aim his camera for ship. The reason being is he doesn't actually look through the viewfinder. He looks at the screen. All right, his camera, which I believe is a P900, uh, well, he's bought a new one since then, I believe, and the, uh, the camera in question, he doesn't look, he hasn't actually looked through the viewfinder. He looks through the little screen uh, that the camera has. Uh, it has a screen a lot like a like a camcorder, right? So it has its own type of thing. So he doesn't actually get. He isn't really aiming his camera correctly, at least. So what I did, and you can see, he's he's aiming far and above uh, his forward position. All right, unless he's trying to claim that he is several several feet above the water. 
which in this case wouldn't actually work out for him because he claims that the water was up to his nutsack. So, what I did was some simple, a little thing, it wasn't really complicated. I went ahead and I changed, all I did was bring the picture up uh, to where the tree lines match. <clears throat> and as you can see, the uh, that doesn't really help him at all. Because when you sit there and you look, and that makes that buoy, a, that changes the buoy's height tremendously. Right? So we're going to pretend like he knows how to aim at fucking camera. Uh, across the shore, right? We're lining up everything. And I want you to take note of where the where that little straight line is, the horizontal straight line. Right? If you're curious, here, let me go ahead and make that a little more visible. There you go. Yeah, a little bit. There you go. Now. And then you can see it a little bit better. So he hits the tree, he hits the shoreline in his afternoon, uh, his afternoon footage, I believe primarily because he was at full extended height, including the camera was at its normal, uh, the normal vantage point that he uses, uh, which is the tripod extended fully. Now, in the the, by the way, just to give you a, 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 an idea of the, the size of these uh, buoys, and because it's, it's kind of pertinent, um, they're about 14, about 14 feet tall from the water to the light, to the very tip top of the light. Okay, I utilized uh, some various a very simple process. All I did was I took uh, that little measurement right there, all right? That little uh, uh, toe handle, for lack of a better term, they have a name for it. Anyway, the actual uh, diameter of the uh, hole, the actual hole, is about six inches. These things are not small, right? Uh, if you're ever curious, you can just look it up, uh, you, you know, on just how large the buoys are. They're not small things. They're large enough for a man to stand on, right? And the, uh, the number 17 is about a foot tall. This is meant to be seen by ships and boats. So it has to be large enough to be visible, okay? Especially the number, the numbers do matter. Now, so these are not small. I even roughly uh, kind of gave a guesstimation about how far away from Travis this uh, particular buoy is. And it's about, I want to say, between six and 800 uh, feet away from him, right? You can even look on Google Earth and you can find that there is the uh, the uh, mooring buoy, he's got a round, a giant round one in, in his footage, and that mooring buoy actually shows up on uh, Google Earth, and I measured the distance between that and the point at which he usually takes his photos, and it was about six and a half, about six, about 650 uh, feet away from where his position is. So, rough guesstimate, I'd say that the uh, this particular channel buoy is about between six and eight hundred feet away from him. So not too far away, but definitely not right up close and personal. And obviously, 
whenever he takes these photos, he is zooming. Now, you will notice that the buoy, especially in this one, uh, is actually pretty clear, right? Which means that his focal point, uh, his actual focal point, is closer to the buoy than it is to the objects in the background. I find that interesting. Uh, had he had he not focused, has his camera not be had been focusing uh, more in the uh, where the buoy was, which is uh, much much closer to him than the background, which is several miles away. I believe uh, it's this distance. It's close to I think eight miles, give or take. Uh, so a good bit of distance. Not gonna lie. Uh, but his focal point was much, much closer. So the items in the background are, he could have got a really good, some really good footage. Uh, but as if I remember correctly, he didn't. He likes his house. Now, so here we go. Back to the tale of the two buoys. Okay. So you have this one in, it's in the evening, very clear, very crisp. You can see what it's nice and green, pretty, uh, it's in focus, which it shouldn't be. Uh, then we're going to go to, let's do some comparisons, okay? And look at some of the distances and why I'm, I'm just not, not, not buying it, basically. All right. <clears throat> Now, there we go. Oh, that shouldn't be like that. Let's go ahead and change some things, shall we? That was unintentional. You'll have to excuse me while I erase something. Because it's a measurement that I wasn't taking uh, the distance between. You'll excuse me, I will quickly do this because I am a man of integrity. I'm not a piece of shit like some people. All right, actually, no, let's get my select out to you. Make me square. And we will cut this right out because I just want to do from bottom to bottom to show you. There we go. That I'm. I am not an asshole. Cut that sucker right out. Cool beans. And then, do 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 do. Where is my thing? There we go. Cool. Okay. Now, again, those are six inches, right? <clears throat> so from bottom, you measure the bottom to the bottom, and basically you're looking at how high the difference is. Let's see now, we got one, two, three, four, five, and then the second one, one, two, three, four, five, and almost six, so almost six feet, almost a six foot difference, right? So the morning buoy was six feet higher than the one in the evening of the next day. Now, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but unless Travis is 14 feet tall or so, his nuts aren't going to be the only thing in the water. In fact, as I can tell, Travis is not a very tall individual. So it would definitely be over his head. Had the tide been it's about a six foot difference. The tide was not a six foot difference. It is very easy to find out what the tide was that particular day. That particular day was about a tidal difference of about, it's the tidal height difference of, I want to say it was uh, about a foot and some change give or take. 
And at maximum, the tide at which he was supposedly nuts deep in was only about two, two feet, which, again, it, I'm sorry, Travis, but either you're a really short guy uh, or your ball's hanging to, to uh, halfway past your knees. Anyway, no. But the idea is that it was supposed to, supposedly, uh, for him, he said it was thigh high. Uh, and his nuts were about to get drenched. Uh, the problem is that the times at which this tide would have been the way it was. You watch his video, and he tells you about what time. It's about 9.30 in the morning. And he has other footage of still shots that he does. So it's about almost uh, 9.40. So he spends about a good 10 minutes in the water, and in 10 minutes, that didn't just go from ankle deep to balls deep. It was already uh, that way. Now, me personally, I wouldn't be taking a relatively expensive piece of equipment, electronic equipment, into murky water that is at the very least, at the moment, that he went out there, probably about uh, above the knee, not quite to mid-thigh. Now, and that means he would have had to have set up his tripod and all that kind of stuff and done all of his setup while he was either on shore or in the, in the water itself. I see him set up. He usually sets up right there at the spot. He doesn't preload his... He doesn't set up his camera and whatnot on the sidewalk, he does it right there on the spot. He could have done it on the sidewalk, who the fuck knows. In the end, there's still some problems. And my original uh, observation is still true. The camera was, in fact, much closer to the water then he likes to let on. In fact, I would say Now, as you can see from where the, and it's really hard to kind of tell on this, but the straight line is about right to there. Close. All right. Which is about two feet off the water. All right. Or at least it appears to be about two feet off the water. <coughs> Um, and that is a bit of a problem for Travis. If you have this difference of five, supposedly a tide that would have risen, would have caused the buoy to rise uh, five, almost six feet, your camera is only about, your camera supposedly, uh, you put it in there, it's like five and a half feet, five, some shit like that, right? Where your tripod set up fully extended. Uh, there's some shit that doesn't quite make sense, does it? But you actually only have about a two foot uh, at max two-foot tide, right? So about two feet of water, and you've got three and a half extra feet above the water, and it all starts looking a little weird, right? The only way to, to achieve that seemingly uh, impossible increase in 
height of the morning buoy is if you are indeed close to the water. Now again, this particular photo is, uh, he, he originally didn't aim anywhere near, and that's another thing that I was kind of noticing. If you're looking through a viewfinder, or through, uh, sorry, through a, uh, a little, sc a, uh, the little display, display screen, and you're not eye level with it, then you're going to probably aim a little more of the up. It's a strange thing to do uh, when you think about it, but nonetheless, it does happen. When you're trying to look at something, you end up finding out that you're actually aiming a little more, a little higher, and you would be a little lower. And during his the panning in the video, the boring shoot, he doesn't really wobble up and down so much as when he does during the evening shoot. In the evening shoot, his tripod's kind of all over the place a little bit in some cases, right? So it's got a lot of up and down uh, as he's panning, as he's trying to focus. Is he trying to uh, focus in on certain things. Right? It doesn't necessarily do that during the uh, morning shoot, which means he kind of had it at a fixed position and thought he had it right. Beats me. Either way, uh, and the panning was just a little bit smoother, I'd say, in the morning than it was in the evening, oddly enough. Uh, now, all of this culminates to, once again, I firmly believe that even if the tide was in, and it was two feet supposedly, almost two feet, which is, again, supposedly up to his nutsack, then, uh, again, the title just makes you out to be a short man, by the way, if, if a two-foot tide hits you in the nuts, <laughs> but uh, that being said, I have uh, I have actually seen other footage where he's taken morning shoots, and during that same time period, and same location, the tide was supposed to be high, and it wasn't even it didn't even reach the uh, the signpost, much less. And if it did, it was only about maybe ankle deep, and some so in a couple of places where it was maybe thigh deep, uh, but. What can you do? That still doesn't explain the nearly six foot difference uh, in the footage. Once you align the retrieves. All right. Even if I accounted for that and I dropped the, uh, the image to where the tide, rep in order to represent the two foot tide differential. You know what? That's a good idea. I'm sitting here, I'm talking about it. I might as well see what that fucking looks like. Just for shits and giggles. All right, we're gonna do that one. Turn that one off. This one, we're gonna duplicate this one just because it's easier that way. We're going to turn that one off. Cool beans. And we're going to drop it until it's only two feet above, and then we're going to see how the uh, the uh, the whole kit and caboodle looks. All right, two feet, two feet, two feet, two feet. All right, so the bottom we got. Let's start out with the bottom. All right, we got there's about a foot and a half. There's about and about right there. That's about two whole feet. Line everything up accordingly, right about there. Good deal. And it's about a two foot, right about there. Everybody's lined up. Now, of course, the, the other half of it kind of cut off just because of the image itself. But, eh, what can you do? <coughs> so, that's about two feet. Okie dokie, smoky. Now, let's see what that looks like. Oh dear, that doesn't really help. Let's go ahead and add those right there. 
It's still roughly about where it was before. Now this is close to where it was originally, but not quite. Like there is an actual little bit of difference here. Doesn't seem like much, but it was. And this would represent that two foot title difference. And you're going to notice that still doesn't make any sense. Um, let me get out real quick. Right? Yep. So evening, you see where the tree line is? And the morning. Tree line is still way, way below the uh, height of the bu of the buoy. It's actually almost splitting the buoy in half, right? So there's that two foot difference in tide. That's about how far it would rise compared to buoy in the evening picture. That's how much it should rise. But I can tell you right now, the land does not rise and fall with the tide. The buoy, right, it, it's just not going to do the thing he wants it to do. And either way, you, you can still see that when you look at the, the, uh, the lines, he would still be aiming at the wrong point, which is why I positioned it to where the background would align and at least that would illustrate what he should have been looking at as opposed to what he ended up looking at. If he just panned the camera down a smidge in the appropriate point, he would have been all right. But he didn't. Shit happens. And his mistakes are what actually give them away. Uh, not paying attention to things like properly aiming his camera. If you don't do that, then all you're going to get is shit that's too high. You're going to be missing some stuff, and it's just not going to work out the way you want it to. Kind of like right here. This is roughly if he were actually legitimately where he said it would be, then this would be roughly what he would be shooting. And this is actually different than uh, his original that off, let me turn that on, and we will lower this just really close, just pretty damn close. Mm. <laughs> and had he been aiming in the right direction? That would have worked. But, and this is the big but, his camera is pointing too high. He's not standing several feet up. In fact, if he were aligned with the tree line, he would be elevated much, much higher in the morning. But we know that's not true. So all it is his inability to point the camera in the right direction. Right? Hence why I did that.
put the camera where it technically should have been if he was pointing straight ahead and orienting the camera in the exact manner as he did in the morning and the evening. Which is where we get that weird nearly six foot differential in the in the position of the uh, buoy. So the only way to do that would be to be close to the water. In fact, like I said, yeah, I'd say about 18 inches. The actual amount would have been about, oh, That, about that, so it's about a good two inch. I'd say at least, yeah, about the mount itself would be about 18 inches above water. Uh, stick the camera on, bingo, bingo, bongo. That's still lowered. In fact, that's three feet lower. Then it should be. Roughly. <clears throat> hmm. Interesting, though, isn't it? Still doesn't explain all the other bits and pieces. But... Just for shits and giggles, I pulled more footage, right? Here's the morning footage. Here, here's an earlier take of the morning footage, right? See roughly where's, where he's centering. Oddly enough, it centers just right here. I don't know why it uh, didn't do so in the other fit, in the other uh, part of it. So you see where everything's at. You see where the boat's. The boat's roughly, he's, he's looking at it above it. Depending on how tall the actual boat is off the water, he's aiming just a little bit high. Which is fine. The afternoon footage. That's right. The afternoon footage, he is definitely aiming really fucking high at that point. Like, stupid high. Again, this is what happens when you're not looking through a viewfinder. Right? If you're just looking through that little, little digital screen that, that shows you where you think you're pointing at, you're not. that's not the same as looking actually through the viewfinder. Just fucking learn to do that. And manual focus would be, is your friend. Okay? That's something you apparently don't know. Anyway, that house, the there, is his favorite house to film. He loves that house. It's an octagonal red house. It's got, I think, three, three stories, I believe, in a good eye. I guess it's so high above the water. He has a tendency to aim high, and not in a good way. All right, so what I did was, of course, I did the my usual adjustments to his unfortunate inability to aim his camera right. And utilizing, of course, the tree line. And that puts it about there-ish. Right? Lines up pretty well. And I want you to take note uh, that cell tower, I believe it's a cell tower. Uh, I could be wrong, but I want you to pay attention to it. Yeah, that's one of the ways I was able to uh, put everything where it's supposed to go. Uh, 
can see that I lined up that particular bit in both shots. I want you to pay some very special attention. Now, he is, of course, still aiming high, so he's got his, uh, his actual focal point, or sorry, his, uh, we'll call it the vanishing point for, for now, or vantage point for that matter. A little high, I'd say at least to uh, the bottom of the second story of the house, uh, which is fine. But I want you to pay attention to the water line. Okay. In this particular image, you can see the water line uh, fairly well. Or if you will, say to hide that. Um, and you can see it's a bit fuzzy, but you can still see it. In the, in the actual video, it's a little crisper, but. Uh, he has a little, I needed to find a particular point that would match both these two images. Now, the boat, obviously, you can see there's a bit of a smudge in the background. He does point out in the video, and that boat, he does have some really good, uh, good footage of the boat bobbing and swaying and you can definitely uh, see the uh, inferior mirage or at least the the refraction of the boat itself you see right here it looks like more like an airplane than it is a boat now and these are things that Travis can't do he doesn't know how to do what I'm doing right now because he doesn't know any pro he has any programs all he does he takes two different players and tries to to like put the things next to each other and then that doesn't do any good. Having things in, you know, next to each other isn't the same as being able to overlay images. So by doing that, I can, what I think is interesting is you, you see the waterline here, right there, Ray Crisp is supposedly his uh, aqua bands. Pay, pay special attention to the, the, the light one above the dark one, okay, right about where my where this sucker is, right there. All right, so we're gonna put in a halfway point. Now, I want you to notice something. That's awfully close to where that boat, that little the mirroring effect or the boat sitting in the water. I thought that was kind of neat. That it just bisects it right about where you would expect the boat to be sitting on the water. And Travis will, in some ways, claim that he's looking at water that goes all the way to the house, simply because he can see the house and the water. He makes the assumption that the house, that the water meets up to the shoreline, and that's what he's looking at. This boat is not the size of a house, and we know that it's the actual boat is much closer. In fact, I would almost take a wild guess and say the boat was about three miles away. Probably about three or four miles away from his actual position during the time of his uh, during the times of his recording. Now, just for shits and giggles, and because I'm an asshole, we're going to put the buoy in the picture. All right? Let's find a good one. <clears throat> and, uh, oh, by the way, the tide, that's what's funny, is the tides, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that. This is also one of the reasons why it's kind of pertinent. Now, the tide is supposed to be much higher in the morning, which is with the boat, than it is in the evening. 
why doesn't that why did then why if that were the case then why when you line up the land in these particular these two uh, particular shots does the boat sit roughly where those where that water line is it's strange right I think it's strange but that's just me so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab we'll grab this one because it's for the morning, the morning in question, and see where that sits, right? Well, no, we have this dark band. Well, no, we'll we'll do the morning one just because it's it's a lot easier. So we're going to nope duplicate, duplicate. So we're going to bring it bring it all the way over to here. this because it's fun that way. Make sure I'm still recording. Yes, I am. Good deal. All the way over. And we're going to go all the way there. Cool. Okay. Now, the obvious is that it's not quite the way it's supposed to be, right? So we're going to change the opacity. So I can see it, cool beans, and then we're going to raise it. I'm not going to change anything other than to probably line up his, his uh, icons because that's roughly uh, an easy way to do that. Now, let's see. So we take the da da and the da that. And now line up the icon. Give or take. And that's about right. That's about where the, well, it's the easiest. Oh dear. Doesn't that seem strange, doesn't it? It does seem strange. So we're gonna I might have to actually roll it a little bit on that too. We'll say just for clarity's sake, we'll put these two gentlemen that were indeed closer to him than the boat, but still in a mirror effect line up there. And eh, that's about right there where it was originally when the other the other part of the film. So and we'll just move this. Eh, we'll stick it right about yeah, about there. And there. That's that's quite a good one. Okay. See how that looks. Hmm, that's about right. Now take that down to its. I'll do that real quick. Come on, eat that. Now we're gonna take this one. Uh, turn that one off. And now you see that mirroring. And that same mirroring should show up, right? Roughly in the same spot. Let's find out, shall we? Now, I haven't shrunk anything. I haven't stretched anything. I haven't manipulated other than moving it up and down. That's side to side just to sit there and uh, that's it. So there's no accusations are ever going to come out of that one. Boop -doo. Oh, yeah, well. Let me. I was going to change the opacity. There it is. Yeah, because there you go. The 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 uh, you can see it in the one line. So that's probably where I should bring it up. I should actually bring it up a little bit further, but yeah, it looks like I will bring it up just a hair to get that to match as far as where that little fuzziness goes. Transform. All right, right about if you look, uh, it's about, eh, yeah, about right there. Ish, which doesn't quite make 
sense at all. Battery died. And this is why that doesn't make sense because it's too, it's almost too high. But let's just say, no, no, I think I had it right. I believe I did. It's just a little bit lower. But just for now, we'll go ahead and raise it up. Not going to make a whole lot of sense, but here we are. Okay, let's go ahead and change yawn opacity. And those kind of fit together, right, roughly. Now, I will recognize that there is, uh, oh, that's what it is. I am a dumbass. Um, there is a size difference. You were zooming in, and there's a different zoom level, so I was probably right the first time. Uh, so in this case, I am going to uh, shrink this one down. I hate having to do it, but I have to uh, in order to match the appropriate, uh, the appropriate spots because it did not look right to me. I don't like doing that, but here we are. Changing sizes. Uh, in order for it to make any kind of sense. So it actually put it. No, see that doesn't make sense either. Because the tree line was just fine. And now that wouldn't make any sense because the tree line isn't that different. Well that's not true. It, this one is further away. My bad. Alright. No, no, I don't get the same right either. Hmm. So we'll do it like that. Yeah, maybe a different zoom. See what that was like. Hmm. Eh, maybe, but that doesn't make any sense because the water doesn't, the water isn't lining up right. The actual like size of the waves and whatnot isn't isn't. So I know full well he had the same zoom. Uh, I believe at a certain point, but this is not that point. So that doesn't physically make any sense. And I'm willing to to admit that. All right. So I was probably right with my first, the first observation. Um, and mm, I'm gonna check how that looks. That is where we lined up the icons. Uh, Let's go ahead and line up those icons just because it would make me feel a little better. No, this is fine. This is fine. All right, so we have the house, we have everything. Yeah, it doesn't quite, uh, yeah. something's not right. Isn't me. So what I'm going to do is just to eliminate uh, any issues. I'm going to select my me triangle. I'm going to isolate. Why can't I do the thing? Yeah. 
कहता था Two, that's quite right. Oh, not too bad. It happens. I take this off. There we go. Couple of these. Let me go ahead and turn that off. And let me go fill in the capacitors a little bit just to help it out. Hmm. Cool. Where we can see everything. Return the chain. Pow. Boom. Hmm. It's interesting. That's about all I can say. Yeah, he's aiming too high. Anywho, well, that's really all I've got uh, for these particular observations. Uh, a lot of it doesn't make sense and doesn't quite comport with what he was saying. Uh, Travis needs to learn how to look through the viewfinder and stop looking at a stupid little screen, uh, aim properly. Lock in your fucking uh, try the actual uh, the uh, what is it the Z axis Z axis yeah the, the up and downy right lock it in and leave it there okay now when you pan left or right you don't have to wibble wobble and you're not aiming at the fucking uh, the tree line that'll be it now. Uh, was the camera lower? Yeah, it was lower. It was closer to the water. Uh, whether, uh, not just from the water rising up to, uh, to, uh, Travis's, uh, sack, but to, uh, I do believe that the camera was lowered to be a little bit closer to the water. It may have been a lot, may have been a little, but... The discrepancies and the anomalies when you start looking into how things are supposed, to, how things are proportioned. Uh, there wasn't a five foot or almost six foot uh, tidal difference. Had he aimed his camera correctly, uh, it would have that would have, and that would have represented that, and that doesn't happen. Uh, the boat, uh, it pretty much when you line everything up. <coughs> Uh, you can see just like th you can you can you can see right here uh, how much higher the uh, the buoy would be projected above the uh, the actual uh, the uh, dang it above the uh, line of sight right so above that vanishing line uh, that it's the only it's the uh, it's the this line right here right uh, that one um, it is very much uh, off now I understand that there's probably some different focal lengths in in this, uh, and if I raised the buoy a little bit higher, that doesn't help Travis at all. In fact, it, it's it very much uh, hurts 
his uh, his claim that he he didn't lower the camera closer to the water. Uh, I believe he did. If he did, if if he went out into that into that uh, thigh high water at nine thirty in the morning on September fourteenth of this year, right, knowing full well that he has expensive equipment that he could very well drop or things like that, or even if he had it all set up and then went out in the water, he would have to reposition himself. And you gotta wonder where that footage is. This is some of the things that I think is problematic. Is during his evening footage, he shows you putting the camera on the tripod. The camera's recording as he does it. You see the tripod. You see it's on relatively, uh, I'm not going to say dry land, but there's, it's definitely not submerged in any way. And you see him put the uh, camera right the fuck on it. Where's that footage that should be uh on the camera had he started shooting like he normally does where he sh- he start he does start recording a lot of times before he actually mounts the camera even if he set it up i personally would have gotten some uh footage of just how high the water is prior to getting into the water All I did notice, I did, I did find the video where he he claims that he was in the shit. I think it's called uh, "Sacrifice the Body," I believe is the the uh, video, um, in which it's the afterward. It's a quick live, and it was it was it was after everything went down. There's no recording of him getting into the water, only a recording from the shore claiming that he was in this. So, my overall suggestion, Travis, all you gotta do is go back to the original, the the raw footage, and just present that uh, unedited uh, morning shoot. That only seems fair because so far I haven't seen the unedited version of that shoot. I really like to. It would mean so much and it would help your, your case. It would help you prove yourself to not being a lying, a lying piece of shit. Now, you've called yourself a liar. I agreed with you. So here we are. All you have to do. That's it, man. Cough it up. Till next time, guys. And there will be a next time. Talk to you later.